Hello students, in this video we'll see how to solve a differential equation near a regular singular point by putting the equation into its normal form. Let's consider the differential equation y double prime minus 2 over x y prime plus 1 plus 2 over x squared y is equal to 0. So this is exactly in the form where 0 is a regular singular point for this ODE. So note that 0 is a regular singular point when we use the method of Frobenius. Rather than use the method of Frobenius, I'm going to do an alternative approach to this. I'm going to put the problem into its normal form. So recall, if we have y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y is equal to 0, then what we do is we let y equal v times m. And what do we know about v? We know that v v solves v double prime plus q minus p prime over 2 minus p squared over 4 times v equals 0 when m is equal to e to the negative integral of p of x over 2 dx. That's the normal form of, let's call it normal form of the ODE, the normal form of the second order equation. Very useful technique. And so what will the normal form over here for us be? So what's this m going to be? So this m is going to be e to the negative integral, 1 over 2, and then p is going to be a 2 over x dx with a negative sign. So the negative is going to turn to a positive of the dx. So this m is going to be what? e to the integral of dx over x. And so I just get e to the natural log of x. So my m function over here is x. And I'll just restrict the fact that x is greater than 0 because I'm going to push things beyond x equals 0. So that will, I don't know any for absolute value there. All right, good. So that's my, um, that's my m function over here. And so now what will my normal form look like? This could still be a mess. We don't know a priori that this is going to be any easier. But for this particular case, I've constructed the function in a simple way that will make it work out really nicely. So my q is what? So my q is going to be 1 plus 2 over x squared. And then if I look at this quantity over here, what's my p prime going to be? So my p is going to be a negative x over 2. So if p of x is negative, uh, let's say it's negative 2 over x, which is negative 2x to negative 1. So what's my p prime going to be? My p prime is just going to be what? It's going to be 2x to negative 2. Good? So I have 2x to negative 2. And then um, what's p squared going to be? p squared for us is going to be what? It's going to be 4x to the negative 2. So let's look at this quantity over here. So what's my v equation? So my v equation is going to be the following. So my v double prime, v double prime plus q, which we know to be 1 plus 2 over x squared. That's my q. And then I need a negative p prime over 2. So negative p prime over 2 is just going to be a positive x to the, uh, oh, the, the p prime, right? So p prime is over here. So if I do p prime over 2, that's just going to be x to the negative 2 with a negative sign. So it's going to be x to the negative 2 with a negative sign. And then if I look at negative, if I look at p squared over 4, that's going to be x to the negative 2 with a negative sign. So that's another negative x to the negative 2. V. And lo and behold, what happens to these x to the negative 2 terms? They all cancel out. And so the ODE for V that we get is V double prime plus V is equal to 0. That's trivial to solve. That is, by our other methods, Y equals C1 cosine X plus C2 sine of X. And then now what's the final step in the process? The final step in the process is to note that your solution y looks like v times m. So our solution y, our general solution for this problem, is going to be, um, I'm sorry, that's going to be our v equation, not our y equation. That's going to be v, not y. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. That's actually a v. That's my solution to the v equation, not y. Force of habit. And so what will um, y be? So y is going to be v times x. So I have x, that's my multiplier, m. And then c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x is my v. And so the general solution is going to be C1x cosine x plus C2x sine x. I encourage you to do this with a power series method, with a, with a method of Frobenius, and define what the solutions to the initial equation are. It looks to me that the solutions to the initial equation should be C equals 1, but it's good to verify that. So putting a problem into normal form gives you good good properties and makes the, makes the power series approximations a lot easier to handle. So I always like to check this first to get a good sense of what the power series solutions are going to look like. Thank you very much.